Hello, and welcome to Literacy Volunteers of Greater Portland's new tutor training. This presentation will focus on setting boundaries and expectations. In this lesson, you will learn about program guidelines, gain an understanding of the importance of boundaries, and learn about monthly tutor reporting. Setting clear boundaries is an important aspect of the tutoring relationship. Because the tutoring relationship is built upon rapport and trust between two people, it can be easy for the relationship to change into a mentoring relationship or friendship. But by setting boundaries, we protect and sustain the focus of our work with students and ensure that their educational goals will be accomplished. It's important to note that the discussion of boundaries within our program also encompasses critical thinking and cultural competence. Because not all tutor pairs are the same, all boundaries are not the same. There are, however, some boundary conundrums everyone should avoid. Setting boundary starts at the beginning of the tutoring relationship. In the beginning, the primary focus of your work with your students will be assessing them, getting to know them, setting boundary and boundaries and expectations, and establishing routines. We encourage tutors to write down their specific expectations so that they can give them to the student. And in doing so, you're communicating explicitly and clearly with your student about how you want to conduct your relationship with them. Doing so also sets up the professional boundaries that allows you to be able to maintain your role so that you are a support and uh, help to your student who has serious uh, goals to accomplish, which will allow them to live and thrive in the greater Portland area. Let's look at a couple of examples. We'll take um, Susan. Susan, a new tutor, noted on her list of expectations that she would like her student, Zara, to call or text before their appointment time if she thought she was going to be late. She also specified that if Zara did not communicate and was more than 20 minutes late for the session, it would be canceled. As a result, Zara learned to call ahead of time if she was going to be late and would have known what to expect had she not arrived um, within that 20 minute period and found her tutor not there. Conversely, Gerald, another new tutor, did not set expectations with his student, Jean. As a result, the student had no sense of where Gerald's boundaries were. When Jean arrived late to find Gerald had left, he was left feeling confused and anxious to apologize to Gerald. Setting the boundary or expectation at the outset allows for clear communication and understanding. Poor planning is another detriment to the boundaries of your tutoring relationship. When tutors do not plan for lessons, a void is created that will be filled by extraneous and superficial activities, and the boundaries of the relationship can become amorphous. Here's a list of the most common expectations that tutors set. Um, and there may be others that you have thought of that you would like to include, or um, there may be others that you want to run by Rachel, but feel free to, to uh, loop her into your thoughts around setting expectations and maintaining the boundaries of your relationship with your student. But to get you thinking about it, here are some ones to consider. Timeliness. Many tutors, um, because we're American, we value timeliness, and many tutors want to make sure that they're very clear with their student in asking them to be on time. Communication is another big one. Um, be clear about how you want your student to communicate with you, if they need to reschedule or they need to let you know that they're running late. Engagement. Because we work with people who come from many different parts of the world and in places where there's a, a, a pretty steep power differential between student and teacher, some tutor, tutors want to be sure that their students feel very comfortable letting them know when they don't understand something and that they are um, they're struggling with the learning. Uh, homework. 
if as a tutor you are assigning independent study after your tutoring sessions be sure that you've communicated with your student about your expectations around homework completion but as you do so acknowledge that your student has time commitments and constraints that may not allow them to complete um, in-depth or time-consuming work Think about what is appropriate for your student and what they're going to be able to accomplish in a short period of time outside of their time with you. Cancellations. Um, if there are too many cancellations, you may need to find a new match. That might be something that you, or should be something that you bring to Rachel's attention because if there are too many cancellations, then it means that you've not been able to really uh, make any progress or gain momentum towards uh, uh, the goal um, completion. Uh, just a quick note, some of these expectations may be learning opportunities for students who are still learning to adapt to American and Maine culture. Tutors should be mindful that adhering to these expectations is a learning process for students. Once again, I just want to remind you that we are talking about um, a cultural learning opportunities. Um, so be mindful and compassionate when your student isn't able to demonstrate the, the competencies that we expect. Um, understand that they come from a different framework for how to understand time and how to build relationships. And those things may be something that you bump up against. And if you're struggling with, with those cultural aspects, feel free to give Rachel a phone call or send her an email and talk to her about what you're experiencing so that you can adjust and or make some uh, uh, arrangements that will allow you to continue to work with your student. In assignment 10, you will look at a series of scenarios. Choose two to evaluate. Track down what's wrong in the situation that you're evaluating and what could have been done to prevent it. As usual, submit your answers to Rachel in the body of an email or in a Word document as an attachment. To access the document, just click the picture. Here are a few major boundary issues we want to bring to your attention, but please note, these issues have uh, rarely, if ever, come up um, within our, our tutor matches. However, because we work with the public, both on our volunteer and our student side, we want to be prepared for all eventualities, including those where people are not on their best behavior. The first is regarding sex sexual harassment. Um, if the tutor or the student is making the other feel or uh, making unwanted overtures of a romantic or sexual nature, this is an issue that needs to be brought to the attention of our coordinator immediately. If there are requests to meet in home, please understand that that is not allowed by the program and that those present liability issues for both the tutor and the student. Gift giving. We regard gift giving as a feature of an intimate and very personal relationship, and this can obscure the boundaries of the tutoring relationship. Now, having said that, some very long-term or long-established tutor pairs may indeed give each other um, gifts that relate to the work that they do together. If you, as a tutor, want to give your student a notebook um, or a pencil or a book that they're reading, or book to read, I should say. These are appropriate because they have to do with the work that you're doing together, and those are resources um, rather than gifts. If there is habitual lateness, um, then this may result in um, a, a new tutor match. We we want uh, the time of our volunteers and our students to be respected, and if um, we're finding or noticing that one or the other is habitually late, this might trigger either a student going back on the waiting list or a tutor being asked to perhaps take a break or both being matched with different volunteers or students. If there's an inappropriate attachment, um, the student or the tutor seems to have developed an unhealthy reliance on one another. Um, this is something we want to know about. Unfortunately, 
those sorts of relationships are not um, ones that we can measure and they are outside of our purview um, as an educational program. Those things might um, trigger an exit for both the volunteer and the tutor from the program. Having said that, we don't want to discourage people from developing genuine relationships, but please note that if you find that that is the case, please inform um, Rachel so that she is able to um, take the uh, proper steps to ensure that the program boundaries remain intact. If you are noticing that your student is exhibiting um, behavior that is concerning and impeding um, your work with them, and this can also be said for the, uh, the tutor as well, we also need to know those things. We want to make sure that people are getting the help that they need. We also want to make sure that we're not overburdening people who may be fragile or vulnerable by adding a, an element to their, their life or their service package, which they might not be able to um, comply with or engage in fully. Here are some common challenges adult English language students face. Unmet needs is one. Because some of our students are asylum seekers specifically, they're not eligible for um, a number of services that are available within the community. They may present with an unmet need. And if, in fact, someone does disclose to you that they are, for instance, without food, then please connect them with literacy volunteers and the program coordinator, specifically Rachel. That person is able to help them um, access the appropriate service so that those needs are met. Homework help. Many of our students are attending classes in other organizations. They could be community-based organizations or they could be institutions of higher learning um, and are assigned homework as a result. But we want to be mindful about the fact that those students also have real life goals. Every activity that we do should be driving towards the accomplishment of their goals, be it a, a pass the citizenship test, obtain a driver's license, get into SMCC, be able to navigate society. And it's not always clear that the homework assigned from a particular class will aid in the accomplishing of that goal. However, um, if you feel that you'd like to divert some time um, to assist with that, then that's, that's okay. But we want to make sure that you keep it appropriate so that your primary focus and the majority of your time continues to be spent helping your student achieve their goals. Awkward requests. This has rarely come up, but in the instance that um, you as a tutor are asked, um, something is asked of you that may be awkward or a little inappropriate, and you're not sure how to handle it, um, get in touch with the program coordinator once again and troubleshoot that. Um, we want to make sure in all things that you're protecting your role um, and that you're not spreading yourself to then or changing the boundaries of your relationship with the student and cultural barriers. If you are experiencing um, a miscommunication or you're not sure how to interpret a particular behavior of your student and you want to understand, then please get in touch with the program. Um, we're here as resources for you to troubleshoot those um, issues and to also make sure that you are that you feel supported and um, and that you thrive in your roles. Um, so lean on us if in fact um, you are sensing that there may be a cultural issue that you'd like to address with your student and you're not sure how. Also understand that um, many of those issues can be um, um, opportunities for learning because as we've, we've talked about in a previous presentation, um, learning the culture 
is also something our students are trying to do. And one of the things to be aware of is that the language takes place in a cultural context. So as we're learning the language, we're learning the culture, but the culture needs to be decoded for us. And if we're, if we're not addressing those things with our students, then we're missing opportunities for them to learn and grow. As I've said, if things get sticky, then call the program. We are here to support you. If you have a funny feeling, if you are challenged by your students' learning needs and you need to troubleshoot lesson planning or a cultural issue or behavior that you're seeing or resources in the community, then give us a call. We're here to help. We ask tutors to report monthly, um, and we ask that those reports be submitted by the 7th of each month. Uh, the report will ask you um, for your name and your student's name, um, what, what goal you're working on, and rate to rate your progress towards accomplishing that goal in addition to any accomplishments or challenges that you'd like us to know about. You can access the report here at this link. In terms of next steps, um, if you haven't set up a time to meet with Rachel and do your initial lesson planning, then do so. Start thinking about expectations you'd like to set with your student. Um, get your student match if you haven't already. Set up a time to have your first meeting with them, and if you need help with that, get in touch with Rachel. And complete your first report um, on the next reporting cycle. If you have questions about any part of these presentations, contact Rachel at revinson at learningworks.me. Thank you for your participation and for joining our team of volunteers. There's no way that we could do this work without you.